like you to imagine a 15-year-old girl sitting on her parents' couch looking at college catalogs, trying to figure out what her major should be. Now, I'm not sure if hands here. How many people here, when you were like 12, 13, people kept asking you, what do you want to be when you grow up?
Now, when I was 25 years old, I actually did this exercise, and I accidentally found a piece of paper when I was 30, and a couple of tweaks in there, I was generally spot on on what it is I wanted to actually do, because I knew the direction of where I wanted to be, but I also knew where I did not want to be. But the challenge in all of this is trying to direct all of this. Now, sometimes you can get help. And I've been asked by people, do you have a mentor? And yes, I've had a couple of mentors in my lifetime. I have one right now. I love her to bits. I've worked for her twice. I've worked for her a third time, except she's retiring this year. And she's in Switzerland. And that's helped to have somebody to talk to. Madonna's also had a couple mentors over time. The question is, do you know who the right person is for helping you move yourself and your boat to where you want to go? You're saying, wait a minute, boat? What are you talking about boats? When I designed this talk, I showed this to my sister, who's a big TED Talk fan, and she said, what do you know about sailing? Well, I've been in a sailboat, and I know when you're going and you're sailing into the wind and you want to change direction, you have to do something called tacking. You cannot go from A to D directly. You have to go from A to B to C to D. And you decide when and where to move the boat depending on the wind. And the wind's coming at you. You decide how much I actually have to move that boom as I'm sailing into the wind to make it happen. And the better you get at this, the smoother the sail. Now, a number of tacks together is called beating. So if someone who says their career is getting beaten up, good joke, okay, in essence, they've made a lot of directional moves in their career. But the challenge is knowing when to turn. When should I actually be making this move? And should this be a move that I'm making or is being made move for me? Now, not a black slide on purpose, okay? The word tak in Polish means yes, and a few other languages as well. You're basically saying yes to opportunity. Yes, I'm open to a change. Yes, I'm open to a new possibility of where I could be going. But you have to be aware, and this is the real key part if you're going to take anything away from today besides sailing a Madonna, you need to understand who your authentic self actually is. Okay? Everything we add in terms of skills over the years, we add because we know it adds value to what we currently have. We're looking at what we can create, what we can create on top of this. Now, the opposite to tacking is called jiving. So if you're sailing with your butt into the wind, okay, the wind's behind the boat, the boom itself, which has the sail, actually makes it more difficult, and you have much more violent shifts. So if you are being caught from behind with opportunity that you're not prepared for, you might actually fall out of the boat. So you're having to think about, when do I say yes? But also, when do I say no? I use the term networking. Okay? Or as Nancy Reagan used to say, the war on drugs, just say no. There are some times in your career, people are offering you what looks like an opportunity, but it's not. Okay? You could be trying to fit yourself the square peg into that round hole, and it's just not happening. So the point being, when are you going to realize that you need to say no? And by the way, Say no cleanly. Not no but, not no excuses on, but no in such a way that they know, in essence, you are firmly negative. Okay. So we've been looking at yes, and we've been looking at no. Now from that perspective, what are the top transformational tips I want you to have out of the talk today? First one is this, be authentic. There's a lot of people on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, etc., trying to sell themselves and their wonderful business model, what they're offering. What is unique about these people? What is unique about you? And we're not talking about your degrees or your education or your background, but what really makes you, you? Why do people want to be with you? Why do people want to talk to you? Think beyond today. Think beyond next Thursday's dinner. Where do you want to be in the medium term? Are the things you're doing right now adding value for you, or are they detracting from you? Are they adding energy to you, or are they actually taking away from what you actually have to bring to the table? And like the sailboat, know when to turn. See the signals. Look at yourself.
satisfaction or your dissatisfaction. Because if you're sailing into the wind, and the wind's dying down, now is a good moment. Where should I be going? The last point I want to make is very important. Build a narrative. You are the hero in your own story. Okay? You are building that story. But that story has an essence, a center, a core. And only you are going to be the one to save the day. Now, what happened to that 15-year-old girl? We left her on the couch, didn't we? Okay. What do you think happened to that 15-year-old girl 40 years later? She went to college at 16, graduated college at 20, uh, nearly flunked out of college at 18. Uh, that's another story. I have a TED Talk there completely. Uh, she basically became a commercial DJ for a radio station in New York. She learned to fly. She joined the Air Force. She owned several businesses. Uh, from her skills, she picked up in the Air Force. She also was competitively shooting with the Belgian Army Snagger team. She um, got classes and became a college professor. And as for that part about wanting to be adamant and a superhero, she got that part too. You don't have the entire clip here. Why am I saying you don't have the entire part here? Because in essence, I do make the lift. They ran out of uh, <laughs> video. This was for the bronze medal in the World Championships in 2014. I started Olympic lifting in 2005 at the age of 40. You think, 40 years old, hang on a second, isn't that a little old to start weightlifting? Again, think about what happens in your lifetime. Women did not start lifting in the Olympics until the year 2000. They have a lot of people who built the ground for us, but in essence, women were not allowed to compete in this sport for quite a while. I'm going to stop you gambling at me. Uh, <laughs> Olympic weightlifting has changed my life in a lot of ways, not only physically, um, but mentally. I've learned to focus. I've learned discipline. I have learned basically there is no excuses. You prepare. Because if you're not prepared on the day, it's not going to happen. So it's not a matter of coming out and winning a medal because you want one. It's because you can do it. A lot of people talk the talk, but they actually have to walk the walk. Now, I've been lifting, oh, 14 years now. Um, the last 13 years, I've been in the top five in the world in my age and weight group, uh, which is not too much to sneeze at at this point in time. And you say, well, how many 55-year-old women lift? Quite a few. <laughs> and that's the really nice part about this, is I have friends all over the world, 24-hour uh, call service, so at 2 o'clock in the morning, if I need to talk to somebody, my buddies in Australia are awake. If I have a problem at 11 o'clock at night, my friends in Singapore are already awake for the next day. We start talking about things. But it's really taught me a lot about perseverance. So the moral of our story, you are basically aiding your future self by creating skills on top of who you actually are. And in doing that, you're thinking long term, what do I want to be? Who do I want to be? Where do I want to be doing this? So keep investing. We have robotics, AI, self-driving cars. Lots of different things are going to happen in your lifetime that don't currently exist. How are you going to be prepared for your contribution at that moment in time? And be true to your authentic 15 or 13-year-old self. Now, I started this story with a teenage girl. I'm going to end the story with a teenage girl, but it's a different teenage girl this time. Uh, I compete internationally, and Two months ago, I was in Slovenia competing in a world uh, organizational, uh, it's called the International Women's Grand Prix. And women from the ages of 10 or 11 to in their 60s compete in this. It's only women. The first day, we have the youngest and the oldest folks go. And the second day is the competitive folks who are in their 20s. So the old farts, like myself, were in the back of the room watching the, the teenage girls warming up and starting their competition. And we were really inspired. We're going, wow, yeah, the next generation of the sport, and I'm enjoying this and watching them. And there's this one girl who just blew my socks off. She's 13 years old. Her name is Tanisha Thornton. She's from Malta. A multilingual, very talented, level-headed, killer lifter. So we went back to start our warm-up, and they were still out there. And I picked a plateau next to Tanisha, and I said to her, you know, you're awesome. I really like what you're doing. You're my new hero. 
I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> she smiled and said, thank you, we're, we're still lifting. She wins the gold medal, she comes back to the room and she turns to me and she says, okay, Leah, you go out there, you become my new hero. I said, wow, she can lift and she can do the motivational coaching thing at 13. <laughs> And I went out there, I did my thing, and I did really well, got this medal. And afterwards, she and I had dinner together with her coach. And it was a really great time talking to a 13-year-old girl. Because in essence, she's authentic at this moment in time. She's got her head screwed on straight. So if you forget what it's like to be a 13 or 15-year-old teenager, go out and find one and talk to them. Refresh your memory. 